Francium is becoming a data-driven business. They've established a data lake where data from multiple sources is stored. While the data is very useful, the request for data views is becoming overwhelming and causing delays which affects the timeliness of business reports. Using Boomiflow, we'll build a front end to surface our data with a web native user interface that enables business users to view and interact with the data. While Boomiflow has many uses, today we'll be creating a simple dashboard that connects to a data source and provides a web-based view. Flow has a slightly different look and feel, but still carries the same DNA as the rest of the platform. A drag and drop experience that's configuration based versus manual coding. To begin, let's create a new flow and I'll title this sales dashboard. First, let's grab a page component, which will act as our main dashboard page. We'll give it a name of sales dashboard, then click new page layout. Next, let's create some text for this page to welcome new users who access it. And to do that, I'll use a presentation component. Once we drag and drop that into the main container, the ability to type and display text on the screen pops up. I'll name this component header. And then for the content, I'll just type up a nice little welcome screen. Nextly, we'll drag a table component and drop that into the main container underneath our presentation header. I'll name this orders. I'll select data source and choose the query order details from DB option. Boomi Flow has native integrations with various applications such as a SQL database. But by leveraging the power of the Boomi integration layer, we're effectively able to access any application and present that data. The data source we choose here defines how Flow will access the data. In this example, we're leveraging an integration process which is connected to a database or a data lake that we then can display data in real time using Boomi Flow. I'm gonna select get the data from a service and the binding will be query order details from DB binding. Next, let's define the state, which is used to handle selections the end users make. By choosing selected order, I'm ensuring we show information about the proper order and end user selected. And lastly, let's configure how the table will be shown. This is handled by the data presentation section. And to start, we'll add a few columns, which are representative of our database columns. And for each column, we'll have the same settings. After that, we're done configuring the table. Before we give this flow a test, let's create an outcome between the start shape and our page shape. To do this, I'll hover over the start shape. And once it turns green, I can drag and drop the arrow over the page shape to create an outcome. And I'll give it a name of go. Now by running the flow, we can take a look at the work we've done so far. The next component we'll set up is the details page. This will allow us to dive into each order entry and view additional information. We'll be creating another page, so I'll drag and drop that component onto the canvas. This time, let's create additional containers for organization purposes. We'll start with the presentation component again and drop that into the header container. And this time, when typing up our text, we'll use dynamic values. So each order you select has a respective order number being shown. By using the insert value button, I can add these dynamic variables. I'll create another container named order details. And this time I'm gonna change it from rows to columns. This setting dictates how components placed inside the container will be organized. I'll drag and drop three input components into this new container to create inputs for the status, customer, and order total fields. For each of these configurations, we'll leverage that same state value that we used previously, which allows us to capture user level selections. And again, this just ensures that they are presented with the accurate information. The last step of our order details page, I'm gonna add a table to present each of the line items that are on each of the sales orders. The process is mostly identical to the steps we took for the table configured for the sales dashboard page. But with that completed, the order details page is done and we can jump back to the canvas to create an outcome between the two pages. By default, Outcomes appear at the bottom of each of your pages. If you want our outcome or the button to appear within a specific component or table, we can configure this option by expanding the advanced section and changing the appearance. 
under appearance, we have the option to choose orders in that drop down menu for flow to place our details outcome in the orders table that we built earlier. While we made a very simple flow today, the possibilities are endless. Through the flexibility and ease of use, Boomi Flow is meant to automate, enable, and empower your business and data.